Welcome to the Simplicity of the Gospel, brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church in Christ Church in Barbados. I am Lester Merle. I'm here this morning to encourage you to get back to work. Because of the pandemic, the unemployment rate around the world is skyrocketing. In Barbados, we have something like 40% unemployment. But brother, let me translate that into the spiritual. I believe that we are at 75 or 80% uh, unemployment when it comes to Christians working in the vineyard when it comes to Christians sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and there are various reasons why people don't share the gospel but there's such an urgency there's such a there's such a smell of death in the atmosphere there's talk about death we have evidence of death people are dying everywhere and I believe that this is a time for us to realize that we are of the day and not of the night and we've got to work while it is day for the night cometh when no man can work. The Bible tells us that we need to redeem the time, make full use of the time, because the days are evil. And so I'm here to urge believers to rise up from where you are. Let us get back to the harvest field. Whether it's knocking on doors, whether it's using social media, whether it is passing out pamphlets or magazines or whatever the case may be, we have urgently got to get back to, job, to the job. And brethren, there's a lot of work. The Bible said that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Uh, the laborers, not the Christians. There are many Christians, but they're not working. The laborers are few. And the Bible tells us that we should go into all the world. Uh, and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ and baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I find over the years that people are not out there in the harvest field because many people in church are demobilized and desensitized and, and deflated uh, because of other people in church who mean well but they're not doing the right thing. There's some people who are not even sure of their own salvation uh, and they don't even know whether they should share with somebody because they're not sure. Uh, you know, these days when everybody is speaking for God, everybody is speaking for the church, people mean well, but they're not necessarily doing the right thing. And so people are depressed. They, they, they're discouraged. They're not, they're not prone to go out there. You see, every time they come to church or every time somebody speaks into their life, they hear sin, sin, sin. Everything is sin. And so they're fed the debt of sin so often that they're no sensitized only to sin. And because of that, they're, they're, they're really not um, mobilized and, and encouraged to go tell anybody else. Look, I'm not soft on sin. I'm not saying you should sin. I know the wages of sin is death, but there's another side of it. The gift of God is eternal life. I know the word said in Ezekiel 18, 4, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yeah, but we've got to tell him the other side. You don't have to sin, there's, there's eternal life. The, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We could talk to them about eternal life. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 12, let not sin reign in your mortal bodies. Yeah. But we got to tell them that the Bible says sin doesn't have to reign in your body because we're not under the law now. We're under grace. Sin does not have to reign. So when we keep battering people with sin, sin, it somehow depresses them. Some have talked to me. People have said to me that in church sometimes they feel like they will lift their hands and, and they will shout and they will run and they will rejoice in the Lord. But then all of a sudden it goes through their mind that the, the church police is at the back. Just waiting for them to lift their hands to be able to say, well, you can really take down your hands because you're doing this and you're doing that. And people are not motivated to go out there and work for the Lord. Although the Bible says, if we confess our sins, we are God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You people who are intimidating others in church because you're holier than thou and you have more of God than anybody else. Remember that you're a sinner as well. And remember this scripture. He was wounded for my transgression. You don't have to wound me anymore. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. You don't have to badger me and bruise me anymore. Uh, 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for me. And, and, and so I am saved. I am born again. If I make a mistake, I'm not talking about living in sin, but I'm talking about falling into sin. If I fall into sin, I have the right. I have a, I have a mediator and an advocate who's at the Father's right hand interceding for me. And I am sure that he will continue to do that. He was wounded for my transgression. You don't have to keep telling me. You don't have to keep badgering me. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. That is the other side of the story you can give. 
But you want to see a real, real, real good example of how we can get people mobilized and working for the Lord. You will see Jesus gives us a good example in John chapter 4. He came, he came to the well um, and, and there he met a woman of Samaria who had come out to draw water. And they said she came at that particular time maybe because she was so embarrassed because of her lifestyle. The people embarrass her, not Jesus. You don't have to keep embarrassing people all the time about their lifestyle. There's a way to do it. You don't have to be rude and uncouth. You don't have to be coarse and vulgar. You don't have to be abrupt. Jesus didn't do it. Jesus just said, give me to drink. And she began to talk to him and Jesus said unto her, she said unto Jesus, how come you have dealings with me for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? And Jesus said, if you knew who the person was that was talking to you, you would say, give me the drink. And, and he would have given you living water. And a conversation ensued. And Jesus said, she said to Jesus, how are you going to give me water? You don't have anything to draw with. And Jesus explained to her that he had living water. He said in, in, Roman, sorry, in John chapter 4, verse 13, Whosoever drinketh of me shall thirst again. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. A well of water springing up into eternal life. Jesus is nice with the woman, although he knows the woman. He knows her lifestyle, but he's not rude and crude. He's not discouraging her. He's not making her feel less than nothing. He's not making her feel like she is sitting under a newspaper, a newspaper that is flat on the floor. She would have to be real, real low. So Jesus continues a nice conversation with her, and he says to her, Go call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You told the truth. I wonder what some of us would have said. Jesus said, You told the truth. And Jesus explained to her, you've had five husbands, and he whom you live with now is not your husband. You have five husbands, now you're with number six. But we, would, we don't know what the situation is with the other five. We don't know how they treated her. We don't know what the situation is. But we always like to put people in the, in the worst light. That's not necessarily the best thing to do. And the woman said, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. When you go to people nicely, they will really recognize that God is in you and that you're a child of God. You don't have to badger them over the head. The Bible said it is the goodness of God that leads to mental repentance. Not how bad you tell them they are, but the goodness of God. And the, Jesus said things like, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither worship in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem, but... You know, he told about the Father seeks such to worship him, and, and you worship him in spirit and truth and whatever. And the final story is that the woman left her water pot. This woman that had five husbands, she was with one that was not hers. The Bible said that she left her water pot in Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 4, and verse 28. And she went her way into the city. She's now mobilized and motivated. She went into the city and she said to all the men, Come and see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? She became a true evangelist, although her lifestyle was not perfect. And Jesus did not batter her over the head. Jesus was so nice to her. He was not rude. Jesus understood people. There are people who are not trained in, in human resource management. And so they don't know how to approach people. And even in the church, people that we should have working in the field, they are not working because somebody's badgering them over the head, telling them about how, how sinful they are. Brethren, take an example from Jesus. And Jesus ministered to this woman. And she went into the village. And she said, the man, come, see a man that told me all that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? What am I saying then in summary? I'm saying that the harvest is plenteous. I'm saying that the rupers are few. I'm saying we have a lot of Christians, but not a lot of laborers. I'm saying that it's time for us to motivate the laborers to get back into the harvest field. Multitudes are in the valley of decision. People are dying every day, more so than ever it was seen. And God has called us as the church to go out there and tell people of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those of you who only know sin and you can't minister on grace, you can't minister on anything else, it's time for you to get to the place where you are, you are able to encourage people in the Lord so that people are willing to rise up out of the church and go into the harvest field and tell others, snatch people from the fire. Lead people to Jesus Christ because they themselves are comfortable with their own salvation. May the Lord encourage you and may the Lord encourage the church to redeem the time and get up and work for the night cometh when no man can work. God bless you. 
If you do not have a local assembly, feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy. The simplicity of the gospel.